The following video is an example problem that we solved in my step-by-step -step video guide to completing optimization problems. Check the description for a link to the full video. Now on to the final and most difficult problem. We want to find the point on the parabola y squared equals 2x that's closest to the point 1, 4. So we're trying to minimize distance closest, right? We're minimizing distance. Let's begin with a sketch. Here's the xy plane, and we want to graph y squared equals 2x. y squared equals 2x looks a lot like y equals x squared, except instead of opening along the y-axis, it opens along the x-axis. The specifics of the sketch aren't too important. And let's say the point 1, 4 is maybe right here, and we're trying to minimize the distance between the parabola and this point, or rather, we're trying to find the point on the parabola with minimum distance. Any point on this parabola has some distance from the point 1, 4. We're trying to find which point is closest. So let's just sketch a point on the parabola, say it has coordinates x, y. The distance between a point x, y on the parabola and 1, 4 is what we're trying to minimize. We'd also want to write our secondary equation, if there was one. There is one, but it's already written for us. y squared equals 2x. That relates x and y, and that's going to come in handy for writing our primary equation, which is the equation for distance. This is the distance between any point x, y on this parabola and the point 1, 4. It's the familiar distance formula. We have the square root of x minus 1 squared, that's the difference in the x-coordinates, squared, plus y minus 4 squared, the difference in the y-coordinates, squared. Again, this is just the distance between an arbitrary point x, y on the parabola and the point 1, 4. To put this equation in terms of a single variable, well, we know that y squared equals 2x, which means x equals one-half y squared. So where we had x, we'll just put one-half y squared, giving us this equation for distance in terms of a single variable. We could move forward using this square root function for our distance. However, the distance we know is going to be positive, right? The square root always gives a positive number. And x squared, or we could say d squared in this case, is increasing whenever d is greater than zero, which means wherever d squared is smallest is also where d is smallest. So the minimum of d, which is what we're looking for, will also be the minimum of d squared. So it would actually be easier if we just worked with d squared. That way we don't have to deal with the messy square root. So we'll call our function f of y. What f of y is, is d squared, which is just the distance function, but without that square root because we squared it. Again, the idea is that wherever d squared is minimum, that's also where d's minimum occurs. So this one will be easier for us to find because we don't have to deal with the square root. We also need to identify the domain of our function, the allowable values for y. In this case, y could be anything from negative infinity to positive infinity. This is a geometric situation, so there's no real world restrictions. y could be anything. Since we're not focused on a closed interval, we will have to use the first derivative test or second derivative test to classify our critical points as minimums or maximums. We, of course, are looking for a minimum. But let's get to it. We'll take the derivative of f of y, and then we can find our critical points. To take the derivative of this, we're going to have to use the chain rule. And that gets us here. The derivative of a thing squared is just two times that thing. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of one half y squared is just y. Then the derivative of y minus 4 squared is similar. The derivative of a thing squared is 2 times the thing. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. In this case, that's just 1. Now, if we simplify this, we end up getting y cubed minus 8. That's because 2 times a half y squared is y squared. Multiplied by y gives us y cubed. But then... 2 times negative 1 times y is negative 2y, which cancels out with that plus 2y. 
but then also we have 2 times negative 4, and that's where we get the minus 8. y cubed minus 8 is defined everywhere, so the only critical points will be where this equals 0. Setting it equal to 0, we find that y equals positive 2. Now this could be a minimum or a maximum. We don't have the extreme value theorem to apply here. We don't have a list of candidates. So we do need to classify this using the first or second derivative test. You could also just use some geometric intuition and say, hey, this parabola goes on forever. Obviously, there's not going to be a point on it with a maximum distance from this fixed point but let's just use calculus. The geometric intuition assures us that y equals two is a minimum and the calculus confirms it. If we take the second derivative to assess the concavity, the second derivative is three y squared, which is going to be positive at y equals two. Thus, the function is concave up. And so indeed, we've found us a minimum. So the distance between the parabola and the point one four is minimized when y equals two. What's the x-coordinate there, though? Well, since y squared equals 2x, when y equals 2, x is forced to be 2. So the point on the parabola closest to 1, 4 is the point 2, 2.